Hello, this is Gray Hughes. I'm doing an update on the Hart case. As you remember, on April 7th, 2018, the body of what appeared to be an African-American female was recovered in the Pacific Ocean surf in the area of Juan Creek and Highway 1 in Westport, California. Now, what uh, the Mendocino Sheriff's Facebook page does, it updates the case, and it just kind of does it over time, scrolling through almost like a blog, like, like a long article, and you have to scroll to the bottom to get to the updates, okay? Now, due to the condition of the body, the Mendocino County Sheriff's Office Coroner Division enlisted the assistance of the California Department of Justice Bureau of Forensic Services, Richmond DNA Laboratory, in identifying the body. Okay, now, today, on April 17th, the coroner division was notified the Richmond DNA Laboratory identified the body from DNA analysis as being Sierra Hart. Now, they're spelling it C-I-E-R-A, Hart, and we've all been shown and seen in all the records released that it's S-I-E-R-R-A, but they actually explain how we have actually had all the incorrect information this entire time in terms of her spelling. Through an ongoing examination of legal documents, the coroner's division was able to determine her legal first name to be spelled Sierra and not Sierra, so they literally addressed that issue. Spelled C-I-E-R-A. The coroner's division was able to determine Sierra's legal age to be 12 years old at the time of the incident as opposed to 15 years old which was also previously released. Okay, so let's take a look at this image here. So Sierra right there is 12. So you start wondering now, is Hannah actually only 12? You know, it's a little strange that all of a sudden we have all this incorrect information on people. Still. I mean, did these parents keep such poor records? Oh, obviously they have, but... That's just absolutely insane, this whole thing. Unbelievable. Let's see. So the autopsy results, including BA toxicology analysis of Sierra, is pending at this time. Future press releases will only be disseminated when significant developments occur or when large-scale search and rescue operations are scheduled. All right, so right there we have it. The body that was found like we predicted. Um, I don't know if all of us did, but some of us were predicting that the body they're going to find is going to be Sierra. And the reason that I believed that it was going to be Sierra was because I think that it's possible. You know, we speculated that because Devante, Sierra, and Hannah were all missing, that perhaps they were killed elsewhere. And then, you know, I'm not saying this, you know, this could be like confirmation bias, right? I thought that the body that was discovered was going to turn out to be Sierra because I believe at this point that it's very possible that Devante and Hannah, who are in the minds of Jennifer and Sarah responsible for the recent CPS allegations and probably the subject of their most recent uh, anger and abuse. You know, you have Devante going over asking for food and Hannah trying to escape the family back in August. So I feel like it's possible that they were killed elsewhere and then the rest of the family was driven down to California and, you know, perhaps even Devante and Hannah went to California too, but they were killed somewhere other than going off that cliff. And if that's the case, it's possible they will never be found, okay? And it's still actually possible that they're alive somewhere, but I, I just, I don't think so, because I think Jennifer hated both these two kids. I really do. Now, also today, Dr. Oz, who I'm not a big fan of, interviewed the DeKalb family, okay? And we get a little bit more information here. She even did mention that her father was the one that actually called about the first incident in November. I didn't include that because we, we already know that. All right, but here is part of that interview. 
So let's start talking about the times when you did run into the family. So let's go to that last August. And I apologize for the audio quality. I'm not sure why it actually sounds like that. Bruce maybe can take this one. And in the middle of the night, one of the children runs over. What happened? Yeah, it was uh, 1.30 in the morning. Um, we had gone to bed and uh, the doorbell rang. And standing at the door was a young black girl that looked uh, to be about seven. And uh, she commented that she was running away and from the neighbors, uh, from the parents, and that she wanted me to uh, save her or help her. And uh, at that time, she kind of bolted in the house and ran upstairs to where Dana was in bed. And what did she say to you? So she woke me up. I was sound asleep, earplugs. I, I was out. And I wake up to a little girl, you know, kind of pounded on me, begging me to help her and to protect her and not make her go back. And I was trying to figure out, my first thought was, who are you and where'd you come from? Because I had never seen her. Right. And um, she was telling us that, you know, they were abusing her and that, you know, that it was... Okay, so what the girl she's talking about, for those of you who may not be as familiar, is this one right here, Hannah. This is Sierra right here. This is the person that they just identified. So the two that are still missing right now is Hannah and Devante right there. And um, she was telling us that, you know, they were abusing her and that, you know, that it was you know, to protect her. And so I had I'd asked her just to stay downstairs, you know, and the parents, the mom comes over and they just kind of, same thing, just bolt and push in and they started looking through my house for her. And she had gone back up to my bedroom and was hunkered down between my bed and dresser and was just crying not to let them take her. And Jennifer kind of crouched down to Hannah's level and um, was you know, telling her, okay, you need to tell them you're sorry. Yes, ma'am. And you need to tell them, you know, that this has just been a bad week. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you see how crazy that is? It's like she was, Hannah was probably absolutely petrified at that moment and just did whatever she was told. And then you remember that the entire family showed up the next day and everybody was like, oh, everything, you know, kumbaya kind of crap. And then, obviously, at that point, the she probably decided not to call CPS, you know, because it was the first interaction at that point. Now, this is the explanation of the Devante incident at the same house, the Jacobs. All right, here we go. Day the 15th, and he had asked for some tortillas. This is the and 15th. And so Bruce gave him a package of, of tortillas. Of March. Then he came back that Friday night and asked for um, peanut butter and some more tortillas. And more tortillas. Did he look happy, comfortable, scared? No, he was very anxious. And each time it was, don't tell mom, don't tell mom, you know? And we're like, no, no, you're, you're good. But he was always, you know, kind of watching the driveway. Um, and he, he wouldn't come in, he would just come to the door and then run back. So you, I have a list here of uh, events and it's just it's remarkable it just builds up he, you know from the tortillas he's moved to peanut butter non-perishables protein bars i mean it's, it's it's getting a bit more alarming did he appear malnourished to you yes um i did take a you know a moment to try to really unemotionally look at that and he was definitely out disproportionate um very thin hannah was same thing she was Tiny. Oh, he brought over his siblings? No, no, no I'm sorry, but, but from going the first back time, to... Yeah, you know. Did you think he was taking food back to the other kids? Yes, because he was specific about six jars of peanut butter, six packages of tortillas, and there's six children. So I decided it was for all of them. And these are all the questions that I understand you asked. Are they feeding you? What do you say? That they would... He said they withhold food as punishment, and it used to only be a meal at a time. But now that it was going for days at a time. Right. Are they abusing you? And he said yes. Uh, he, Did he, uh, he didn't elaborate. He just... So that clears up a few things. It sounds like he was trying to get a packet of tortillas and a jar of peanut butter for each of his siblings. Okay. Uh, man, this is just so disturbing right here. Told me yes. You asked him if he needed help. What I did. did you say? Let me, I, I'll, I'm going to rewind it so we can hear that what she just was asked. 
time, but now that it was going for days at a time. Right. Are they abusing you? And he said yes. Uh, he did he elaborate? Uh, he didn't elaborate. He just told me yes. You asked him if he needed help. What I did. did he say? And he said, "Don't call the cops. They'll separate us." And I said, "Not necessarily." You know. Oh, he was fearful of not being with his siblings, yes. or not his parents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Devante was concerned that they would all be split up. And so he told them, hey, don't call the cops or anything like that. But then, as you can hear in a minute, he changes his tune. I mean, can you imagine that? Like, they weren't fed for days for punishment. I mean, what was the mother doing in there? Like, standing in front of the refrigerator, not letting him eat? I mean, what a disgusting pile of garbage. Uh, are you being homeschooled? He, all he said was, well, we have books. Huh. And that was it. He didn't say we're being schooled. And you asked something very perceptive. Yeah, you see that right there? Say, so, hey, are you, are you being homeschooled? Well, we have books. So they weren't even being educated. What a joke. Why aren't you ever outside, you asked him. I did. And he said his mom wants to hide him. And then I asked him, was he ever allowed to play outside in Muslin? And he said no. She, I wish she'd asked the follow-up, why does she want to hide you? But isn't that incredible? He actually said, my mom wants to hide me. And then he wasn't allowed to play outside in West Lynn either. So, Bruce, what's going through your mind? You're hearing these stories from your wife. I mean, this whole thing starts to sound more and more bizarre. Yeah, well, it, it, it went on, as she explained, until the final night that he came over and the first words out of his mouth were, have you called yet? And uh, th that was a brief encounter that night, and we sh uh, Dana shut the door, and as soon as she turned around, I said to her, we need to call the authorities. Right, so they actually finally ended up calling, and that's when the authorities came over, uh, I believe, either the same day that they were called, and they showed up about 10 minutes after Jennifer was randomly got home from somewhere, and Jennifer didn't answer the door when CPS called. Then CPS left, and I believe Jennifer opened the door, got the message, called Sarah, and Sarah bolted home. And then they all disappeared probably very early in the morning, you know, late night, like 2.33 in the morning type of thing. And that's when that friend of Sarah's got the uh, text message, and then... They weren't able to contact Sarah, so then they call, she called 911. All right, but that's the update I have for you guys, and I feel like there is something to this, because that's sort of a feeling that I had from the beginning, was that Devante and Hannah, and I bet Hannah's not as old as 16 now, now that we know that Sierra is actually spelled C-I-E-R-A, and she's only 12, now we can sort of throw in the question everybody here. I don't know how old anybody is, or even if we're spelling their name right. You know, these parents just seem like they didn't give a damn about anything, all right? So I think it's very possible that Devante and Hannah were killed somewhere else prior. It could even be prior to them leaving Woodland, Washington. I would go check those woods out if they haven't done that. So this is just another piece of the puzzle. And it's just really sad information, all right? So until next time, everybody be safe out there.